Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about the new version four release of Task Notes, the plugin for Obsidian. It's been a popular plugin for Obsidian. The I do like the way that they let you manage your tasks within here and also be able to plug in your calendar so that you can see your calendar and also manage your tasks and have those things side by side so that you're not planning tasks on top of events that you might have in your calendar. So you get the total full view of what your day is going to consist of your week, your month, et cetera. So it makes planning very easy. Now, the changes that they've done in version four is they're leveraging the basis feature now. So this does a couple of things, but the biggest one is that now the app views will be a lot more performant and it brings it into the fold with what's happening within the core plugin from Obsidian. They can save on coding their own custom stuff. So I would expect that there would be a lot less conflicts with other plugins because they're just using the native stuff that's already built into Obsidian. So this should be a good thing for everyone. The other thing is that they've changed or at least added a way to plug into your Google calendar and your Microsoft calendar so that you can actually chain the, the events around on the calendar, which will also update to the Google calendar or the Microsoft calendar. I'm going to show the Google calendar piece of it and we'll show having events being able to be moved around on your calendar, not just viewed and not just there so you can click on it and add a note to it. So you, you can move things around, which makes it a lot more convenient because when you're putting your tasks on, you might have say you've planned something on the calendar side that you might want to move around so that you can do a certain task and within that same time. So this is a good thing. We'll take a look at how that's configured and how that's set up because it is a little bit involved. So the non-technical people might need a little bit of a walkthrough. So I'm going to show that there. Now from the views here, you can come in here to the views. It looks just like what you would get when you set up a base and you can click on this here. You can get to the different layouts and see all those right in here. You can also come in here and you can do some configurations with events, your date, navigation, layout, and also the property based event stuff that you can go ahead and configure within here. If you want to see those views within the file system underneath the main task folder, you'll have a views folder and then you can see all those base files under there. And that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it. All the other stuff basically works the same. So I'm not going to go through how to use task notes and set it up and all that different stuff. But what I will do is I will go ahead and configure the Google calendar here. So if we go into the settings, task notes, and we go into integration, we do have the Google calendar OAuth connection and we have the Microsoft OAuth connection that you can set up in here. We're going to do the Google one. As you see, you need a client ID and a client secret. And there are some instructions that you can leverage here that they've provided. These are a little bit light on the instructions, especially if you're a non-technical person or you don't know the Google cloud space all that well, then this might be enough. It might not get you where you need to go and you might need a little bit more resources to figure things out. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through this right now. And what we're just going to do is create this OAuth app. We're going to go to the Google Cloud console. Once you're on the screen, you can come up here next to the Google Cloud in the top left. You can do select project, and then this will open up another dialog window. And once you're in this window here, you'll see all of the, all of the projects you already have set up. And from here, you can actually create a new one. So we're going to create a new one here. We're just going to call this task notes lab and we're going to hit create on that there and we're going to let that create itself it should be pretty quick here 
All right, that is created and it already switched over to that particular project that we created. If not, you want to make sure that you are on the right project here. Now within here, if we go back to the instructions, let's open up the instructions again here. So we have both of these in a different tab. What we want to do is we created the project. And now that we have a project, what we want to do is enable the Google Calendar API. And let's switch over here. We're going to go into APIs and services. Get rid of that message. And there we're going to hit the add APIs. One, two. Search for the Google Calendar API. And once we find it, we'll click on it. Click on there. We will enable. All right, so that is enabled. And what we want to do is go into the, let's go back to the instructions. Once this is done, want to go into OAuth and create an OAuth credential. And we want to do the desktop application type. Let's go into OAuth sent screen. And let's get started. All right, so we're going to give it a name and we'll just call it Task Lab. All our email as the support. It will not let you choose the internal. So the only option you have here is for external. So we're only going to use it for testing anyway. We don't want to actually publish this. So available to any test user with a Google ID, but obviously we're only going to share the client ID and the secret with ourselves. So we're not going to share those with anyone else. And we'll go ahead and put in an email address here for contact information. X fetish continue there and I will create it. All right. So now that that's been created, let's go into here. We'll create a client. We're going to create a desktop app the type that it told us to choose in the, uh, in the documentation, you can give it a name, you can name it, whatever you want there. I'm just going to leave it as the default. And what you'll get is this client ID and you will get this client secret. This is what we're going to need over in obsidian for the plugin. And I will save this off to the side. You want to make sure that you do save this so that you have it for your records here so that you can use it later. And I'm going to click OK. That's been set up. And the last thing you need to make sure is that you have a test user set up. And that test user is going to be whatever the account is you're going to use to log in to the, with the plugin. So basically, the account that has your calendar that you're trying to plug in here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this one. And once that is saved, we should now be able to go to city in here into the plugin and let's paste in the client ID and let's place in the client secret. And all we should need to do here is hit connect. It will prompt us for our Google account. Make sure we choose the one that, that you set up as a test user, because you've been given access to an app that that's currently being tested. That's fine. We're going to click continue. We're going to give our permissions here to these different things here to view and edit the events and also to see and download calendar. Continue and here we authorization is successful. We can go ahead and close this window and we are good to go there. And if we come over back over here, we can see that it's connected. So this is good. Now, all we need to do is come back to our view. And if you don't have this calendar view open, you can easily open it from one of the buttons here or the shortcuts on the side here, or you can do a control P and you can type in pass notes and open up this particular view. 
So we have it here. Let's do a refresh and see if things will pop in. All right. So things have popped in there after a refresh. Now, if the refresh doesn't work, I found that sometimes you might have to close Obsidian, reopen it, and things should work after that. But we can see that all of our calendar events are here. If we want to remove some of these calendars, what you can do is you can come in here into the Google calendars here. And if you don't want to see certain things, like I know this one here has most of the events, you can turn them off doing, using the toggles here underneath the Google calendar. So very easy to set up, get it configured. The toughest part is really going into the Google Cloud console and setting up that client to get the client ID and the secret. But as you can see, that wasn't too tough either. Now, once you are in here, there are some things that you can do with the calendar. Now you can still put task on there, put your track your time. So just right click on or click on there and then do create task or create time entry. But you can also change these calendar events around as well. I'm going to move that task down there. So that's even what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the browser here and let's go to calendar and let's put something on the calendar here. Make sure there. Test. I, actually, I'm going to leave it right here for 30 minutes. Come over here. I'm going to hit refresh. And once I hit refresh, there we go. It popped in down here. And, and what we see here from 5 to 5.30. Now, I haven't changed the time. It's in 24 hour formatting here. But if I want to change this now to an hour, you can see I've just changed this from 30 minutes to an hour there. And let's go into our calendar, back to Google Calendar. We can see now it's from five to six. So that did change. We can also come in here. And if we go back to Obsidian, we can change this. And say, you know what? We don't want it for this day. We're going to change it to for the next day. And if we come back to the Google calendar, we can see that has changed there as well. So being able to update your calendar events and move them around time-wise and your different days is very convenient because now, again, if you're planning your tasks within this plugin, you can now change things on the calendar side and move those around to fit any tasks that you might be trying to do within a certain time space. The one thing you cannot do is you cannot open up the event itself and change the date and time from here, but you can move it around on the calendar. And as you saw, it will update the date and time appropriately. All right. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think about the plugin. Have you been using it? Is the new update working for you? Is it better or worse? I love to hear your feedback on this particular plugin. I think this is one of the newer plugins that's going to be around for a while because it's given a lot of utility and some good things to Obsidian, which really isn't all that task and calendar event focus. This does open things up for people who have been wanting these type of features. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next time, have a nice day.